the most dangerous contraband in Georgia's prisons isn't a weapon no, exactly, exactly. or a drug. What was in this place? It's a cell phone. In a world built on control, phones can give inmates the upper hand. And rooting out the threat will take everything the state has got. Behind bars, there are two sets of rules. The prison protocol and the convict code. To survive one code, you may have to break the other. Over a three-year span, National Geographic followed the lives of inmates and officers in the state of Georgia. When a paramilitary system is up against convicted felons, Hey, man, tell everybody, I'll tell y'all that's kidding, man. Who's really in charge? Turn around, face the wall. This is the world of hard time. It's Thursday afternoon at Smith State Prison. I have a walk over here on this north yard. And Lieutenant J.B. Davis is taking his team into the compound, setting out on another mission. Hey, We're looking for cell phone drugs, homemade weapons. Don't even try us like that. They have 24-7 to think of new ways to get stuff inside this institution. In any institution you go through in the state of Georgia, you're going to find stuff like this. Shakedowns are common at high security prisons like Smith. They are a potent tool in the system's bid to maintain control. Designed to ferret out contraband, one inmate and one bunk at a time. There's this contraband. So, same. But one item has risen to the top in the battle for safety. Step off the wall. Okay. Go ahead. Stay right here. And today, the officers have found it. Again. A cell phone. Well, what do you got in your mouth? Spit it out. Spit it out. Spit it out. Back up. Back up. Well, what was in the flight? Make sure he don't have any drugs. All right. Anything else on me? Check. Pat him down real good again. You got a what? You got what for somebody? Check him real good. He got some more stuff. That's all you got on. You ain't got no shots, you know. One in the back left pocket, and uh, the other one was in his right pocket, front pocket. Almost every day we find a cell phone. And that's the, that's, that's what's so hard to believe. So many is coming to the institution. Inmates are getting killed over these cell phones. Inmates will go in another inmate cell and beat them almost to death over a cell phone just so they can make contact with the outside world. That's how it is here in the chain gang. Cell phones are a growing danger in prisons nationwide. And Georgia is no exception. The state is home to the fifth largest prison system in America. 32 facilities, nearly 60,000 inmates. It's a world designed to contain and control. But cell phones are breaking down the barrier between incarceration and free society. Five years ago, cell phones were a rare find in prisons across the state. This past year, the department has confiscated nearly 6,000. Winning this war requires constant vigilance. And prisons like Smith are the front line. Man, Dave. <laughs> you feel it? Yeah, I feel so. We've been in here since 8 o'clock this morning, and this is a total of five cell phones that have been found in L building today. 
And it's, just, it's, it's a great success. I mean, five cell phones is a good number. Just found that. And another right cell phone. That's another one. Everybody understand what's going on, right? We ain't come over here and start no mess, but we got to do a job. So we're going we're gonna to treat you right if you treat us right. But we got a job to do. We have a job to do, all right? Everybody understand that? All right, man. Let's take it on out of here. Today's scene at Smith is just one part of a massive statewide effort. One that runs from the cell houses. As you know, cellular telephones present the biggest threat to security in our facilities today. Up to the department's headquarters. They're still running their drug business on the streets, ordering hits in prisons, planning escapes, planning uh, disturbances, you name it. And to the offices of investigators, like Sarah Draper, who tracks how the phones are smuggled in. This is a common form of getting the contraband over. Um, go buy a basketball, cut it open, fill it full of cameras and chargers. It was being thrown over the fence. And here's another one. This is concealing it even better. Get AstroTurf, tape it up, send it over, no one's going to see it. The inmates are expecting it. They'll go to the point where they think it's been thrown over, and there it is. Cell phones inside the facility is an extreme security breach for us. Technology has changed the point now where you have someone who has a cell phone, you've got someone who has a video recorder, a digital recorder, a camera, and basically a mini laptop. So it's no longer you just get a cell phone for the purposes of making a phone call. You get a cell phone, you're gonna have, you're, you have computer access. Despite the threat, federal rules prohibit cell phone jammers, even in prisons. So the department has to fight the battle on the ground, one cell phone at a time. Blackberry here was taking off a civilian that was coming into the institution uh, that has a connection with this inmate. Field investigator John Moore is part of a team canvassing southern Georgia in search of intel. And his best source are the confiscated phones themselves. If they're unlocked, their contents are fair game. It breaks it down by name associated with it. The report reflects also uh, text messages, numbers, and a contact list. Ooh. OK, there's a pile of pictures on here. There's 286. And see, then you start seeing images of possibly the inmate. This right here would be our primary inmate, we would think, because there's so, so many pictures, multiple pictures of him, so this is probably who on the phone. That's 20 cell phones right there. That's a lot of cell phones. I wouldn't be surprised. That's cell phones inside the institution. He's bragging. This is him bragging on what he's achieved as far as getting these phones in. See, he's also, there's some disturbing stuff. Guns are, are, are a big picture item in cell phones. They love to show the pictures of guns from the free world, guns and money. Photos of smuggled contraband, self-portraits, downloaded images. They are a window into an inmate's world, revealing how he's choosing to do his time. Inmates either come to prison to reform, to try to make their life better and realize what they've done and they're here for, or ultimately, they say, hey, while well, I'm here, I'm going to make me a little money or I'm going I'm to do a little hustling. And those that are going to do that, that are going to hustle and, and try to take advantage of our system, then uh, that's where uh, we're going to come in and, and we want to play in the game. That game between the inmates who run phones and the officers who intercept them plays out daily in camps across Georgia. And at Smith State Prison, Officers have made another catch. If you look at it real close, they have separate batteries. They were trying to bring in just separate batteries, not even, not even with the phones. This morning, a routine inspection of a maintenance cart that had spent the night outside the compound uncovered a major stash. 
tobacco, cell phones, and a scale for weighing drugs taped to the undercarriage. There's a lot of contraband that was trying to, it was tried to be introduced into the institution. It was about 25 cell phones. I mean, each one of these phones here can go for about $500 a phone, from three, $300 to $500 a phone, and there's 25 phones here. So that's a few thousand dollars that somebody is out. Whoever it was, whether if it was a gang or an individual, right now he's hurting, because this, was, this was going to be his line of business right now. Today, the officers at Smith got lucky. This contraband right here. But often, phones make their way into the prison in ways more difficult to intercept. Now, it's a total of 31 cell phones. Lower security inmates have work details that allow them outside the prison walls in construction or maintenance jobs. While they're outside of the facility, they can make contact with someone in the free world, coordinating a handoff of drugs or phones. To bring it through the gate, many inmates resort to hiding the contraband on their bodies. It's all kinds of ways they bring contraband in. It's all for that money, all for that money. On the street, you might buy an uh, ounce of marijuana for about $60. They might get 200 joints out that bag, 200 pen joints, just a little bit in it, roll it, sell it for $20 to another inmate. Because it's an item that is not easy to get in here. So the price goes way up. The prison thoroughly searches every inmate that passes through its gates. But to find the most well-hidden phones in an entire cell house, officers rely on something more. It is known as the boss chair, a full-body scanner that can detect metal objects hidden anywhere on an inmate, including body cavities. It's wild, it's wild. You know, they, 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 they learned how to do it. They learned how to do it. So that's how, why we got to stay up on the game. That's why we have to do what we do. That's why we have to search, 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 and every day. It may seem like a desperate method for concealing contraband, but with inmates paying hundreds of dollars for a single phone, it's a choice many are willing to make. Today's find is a major disruption of the prison black market, which could bring tension to the dorms. As y'all see, city cell phones. Important intel for second shift. All of this, look at that. They would have broke it down and brought it inside the dormitory. They would have broke it down and brought it inside the dormitory. And that's why you need to have people pet search these inmates when they come into the dormitory. Pet search them when they come into the dormitory. Because they may gonna have a problem with somebody. Somebody gonna want to get paid. And so that's why we have all of these uh, inmates want to jump on another inmate and all of that. Stay alert, stay alive now. Huh? 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 Smith is now on alert. If retribution comes, it will be swift. But the catch is also a sign. More contraband could be on the way. I just saw someone running. What's up, buddy? Every day at Smith State Prison, inmates break the rules. Go on the other side of J1. Yes, mate, that's geographic, baby. They run contraband, drugs. They got their man on cops, man. And increasingly, cell phones. Every day, the prison cert team catches the offenders and takes them to the hole 
Let it strip down, pass it all out. The jail within the prison. It's all part of a daily face-off between the officers who enforce the rules and the inmates who defy them. The guy's supposed to give me two soups to sew these headphones. We'll find out which one is messed up. Inmates like Mark Goodwine. Right. I've kind of been messing around with electronics since I was a kid. And I really feel like I can do anything. Fix the CD players. I make adapters. I make amplifiers. That way the music's amplified. Battery packs, rechargeable battery packs. It's tattoo guns. Kind of like the, uh, the handyman, I guess you could say. Goodwine's fix-it hustle has earned him a privileged place in the inmate economy. I wet it so it don't crumble. I wet it with a little spit. And a nickname all his own. The Carbon Radio. It's a good skill. Tattoos is a good business, you know, but not everybody wants tattoos. Unless you're Amish, everybody wants electronics. This is what I call a soldering gun. It's just two razor blades, a pin tube, and two wires. A lot of people, they know, hey, you know, if, if radio can't fix it, ain't nobody else gonna be able to fix it. And uh, everything I fix, I cover with a warranty. If the same problem persists, then I'll fix it. You don't have to pay for it. So a lot of people, you know, it, it gives them trust. In a world without currency, radio takes his payment in cookies and cakes even broken items that he can salvage for spare parts. It is an operation that is illegal behind bars. Modified work like radios is confiscated each day. And lately, the altered goods have been heading in a new direction. What he's done here, he's rigged up some kind of contraption, got back there somehow, got the wires pulled out, and he rigged it up to where he can connect his adapter. Inside the soap box, he has a cell phone battery getting charged. He got the paper clips to make a connection here, and that's where they make the contact for the electricity to charge it. It's a sophisticated device by Chang Gang standards, one that takes skill and know-how to put together. And inmates like radio make it their business to keep the phones running. I don't need one. Why do I need one? <laughs> we gotta fix it. We need rechargeable batteries. That's a high commodity. They won't let them on the packages no more. So I steal them from the police. They got walkie talkies. They sit them down, I pick them up, it's over with. They're gone. Yeah, three batteries. They got six batteries inside of them. I take three for this, three for this. Just run them in the current, yeah, got three batteries. Run a wire to it, put it into the phone. A little plug on the back of the phone where you just plug it up. Easy, accessible. The police know that I can fix phones. I've been PI'd for it before, a couple times. PI'd, pending investigation, locked in the hole until further notice. So it's not a secret. Me telling you this is not a secret because not only do you know, they know, and the police knows. It's not like I'm telling America anything different than what the police knows. I'm going to fix it, and I don't care what the police say about it. Catch me if you can. At Smith State Prison, the battle to get cell phones out of the facility continues. 
Today brings another unannounced shakedown by Lieutenant J.B. Davis and his team. Get up! What you got? Report. No problem. Phone's dead. And with it, another find. The process is soaking into his mattress. When I we'll caught him into with his mattress, right? Walk up to the cell. He was uh, sewing the end of the mattress up. Getting caught means sanctions, loss of privileges, you may move it. and a trip to the hole. Something that can hurt a chance at parole. But despite the consequences, inmates keep trying to get them in. All right, thank you. Keep pushing the system. on Facebook is loading up now something, some information. I mean, the cell phones, they're illegal. I mean, you can't have them. You know, you can't, anything that's against the rules, I mean, it's illegal. But you can't justify it. It's wrong, it's wrong. But they don't know it's having an adverse respect. It's making an inmate want to get a cell phone. It's logical. I mean, it's just common sense. If you deprive me of something so long, I have to take it. It's a lot of self-preservation. Stacy Gardner is a lifer at Smith. And with a history of good behavior, he's earned the job of staff barber. One of the only inmates here allowed to touch an officer. Y'all seen Mr. Taylor later? You'd be surprised if you get there now. He's been behind bars for 11 years, time filled with changes he's seen firsthand. To him, the presence of cell phones in prison was inevitable. When I first started doing time, you get a free phone call through the council once a month for the people that were disadvantaged or indigent. Now you can't have but 20 people on your phone call list, and if, if uh, they're not on your list, you can't call them. It's all kind of ridiculous stuff. And then they charge like, oh man, outrageous prices for 15 minutes, you know? It may cost me $20, that's ridiculous, you know? So that, put, that puts pressure on somebody who already with a criminal mind. Hey, man, it's got to be a better way, you know? So now they're devising plans and plotting. It's got to be a better way, so. Hey, go to cell phones. You're forcing them to do whatever they got to do to talk to their families. Your family is all you got. That's a good one, that's my daughter. So you take a man, he's already away from his family. You, know, you make it hard on us. Um, human nature, uh, you, you, you tend to adapt and overcome. Uh, adversity will push you in some, some, some different situations. Phones are freedom. It's a way of uh, getting away. You know, when this this is this place is extremely what do you call it, redundant or repetitive. This is their escape, not literally an escape, but this is their way of getting out. See, and um, that's that's as simple as that. A moment of freedom, a break from the norm. In a world of limited privileges, it's what every inmate wants. But left unchecked, that freedom comes with a darker side. Continuing a criminal enterprise or contacting the victim of your crime. John Moore. And in Reedsville, Georgia, investigator John Moore has just received a disturbing yes, a tip. There. Give me his name again. Okay, give me his GDC number. Okay, all right, I got it. We have an inmate at Smith TC who was using a cell phone device to contact a civilian, and the complaint was filed by the civilian's home. So we'll, we'll need to go address that in our own way. We're going to go and see if we can't ascertain where the cell phone is and, and uh, 
do an interview with the inmate regarding uh, the phone calls he's making. It's our job to build that rapport with them, to basically have an open mind about what they've got and what they're presenting to us. The suspect has already been taken to a back room. The isolation plays into Moore's strategy, divide and conquer. Good afternoon. Hey, partner. My name's John Moore. I'm with the Georgia Department of Corrections Intelligence Unit. And as quickly as Moore arrives, the interrogation begins. How did you contact her? On the phone out there. OK, when I listen to that phone conversation, yes, sir. it's going to show you and her had contact. Yes. And this conversation has occurred. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. I go ahead and say that. I borrowed someone's phone. I called two times. Mm -hmm. What was the phone number you called from? Where did you borrow someone's phone from? Where's the cell phone at? Did he hand it to you, or did he pull it out of his locker and give it to yes, you? Sir. How much did you pay him to use it? How yes. did you pay for it? I know he didn't just give it to you because y'all buddies. I tell you what. You tell me something. I can get his number. And Details emerge. The inmate was using a bunkmate's phone to contact his ex-girlfriend for money. But no threats were made. And the owner of the phone paroled out of prison this morning. I, I don't know what transpired and, and don't know the, the, the depth of the conversation between you and her. It was, but we know for a fact you talked on a cell phone to yes, her. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, and that's got to stop. Sir. And, uh, it will never happen again. OK. Your honesty is the reason uh, nothing's being done right now. And we'll do some more follow-up on it. But that's, uh, right now, we're going to just we're gonna leave you as is. Let you go back to work and mind your own business, OK? The inmate's story checks out. And he's allowed to leave. While the team didn't get the cell phone, they have confirmation that it's out of the prison. Take care of yourself. And the case is closed. Radio about my CD player, man. Hey, man. Yo, what's up? It right. Uh, it work. Every time. If you find somebody out there that's in the dorm or whatever, just send them the money if you can. All right. Well, I'm going to send you two sodas and a uh, soup. That's what's up. That'll be six beezes, right? Yeah, that'll be six, total. I got another one I need you to look at for the radio. All right. I'm going to stand over here today. OK, that's what's up. At Smith State Prison, radio is starting another day at work as F Dorm's resident fix-it man. It's a job that's illegal behind bars, which means he's constantly watching his back. I always feel like there's always a trick right around the corner. When I say I'm really paranoid, I'm really paranoid. But that, that's what keeps me safe, because I'm going to think of every option possible before it comes my way. I don't want to hold it for no longer than what it takes to take them screws out, fix it, put the screws back in, and give it back to somebody. I'm not holding it no longer than that. But the trick is, I've got an upper hand for the fact that I already know that the police knows that I can fix them. And they're coming, if they can. Radio's cautious approach has served him well especially these days. He got it from the back gate? Yeah, they're taking him from the back gate. Contraband has been flowing at Smith, and the prison has stepped up its efforts to root it out. Today, a shakedown is targeting L Building, filled with inmates who have earned prison jobs, a privileged position for most. But even here, cell phones. That's two minutes that's inside the prison, pictures that are taken inside the prison. See here, what they have on here. That's two inmates inside of the prison that they sent it on Facebook. Now, they would probably send this from another institution. So, see, they contact with each other all over the state like this. So, 
these these phones are a way that an inmate can do almost anything he wanted to do and get away with it. Inmates communicating and organizing. It's a dangerous possibility. One that Georgia has already experienced firsthand. On December 9th, 2010, inmates at four close security prisons across the state, including Smith, staged a protest. Lock it up, let's go. A sit-in of sorts, demanding pay for work, legalized tobacco, and parole reform. It was a protest coordinated through cell phone calls from within the prisons. The biggest thing that we've seen is actually a cell phone that we confiscated yesterday. Uh, the cell phone, as we confiscated and had it in our hand, there was a text message come across. What that message said was that the inmates are gonna go in their cell at lockdown tonight and not come out. So know this right here, this, this thing is not being taken lightly. It's not. So hopefully that gives you some great confidence in knowing that uh, the agency's prepared to respond. At each camp, the department was prepared. Inmates were put on 24-hour lockdown, and tactical squad shakedowns swept through the cell houses, uncovering nearly 30 cell phones at one prison alone. All the while, the administration kept the prisons running, delivering meals and medical care. After six days, the inmates stood down, and the lockdown lifted. And although life at Smith has returned to normal, the incident was a grave reminder of the power of phones in prison. No, that's it right there. Oh, strip one. Huh? And from upstairs, what you found, Cash? A possible cell phone charger. But this one stands out. All right. It was found under the bunk of one of Smith's model inmates, Stacy Gardner. Now I'm talking to Stacy. A fine that could cost him his job. It goes back to me being the staff barber. When you work in the administration, as far as detail-wise as inmate, they expect you to conduct yourself with certain mannerisms. And, uh, you know, for them to, to find that around my assigned bunk, it was kind of like a shock to him. What's up with this? It's broke. Yeah, you know. I've had that about five years already, I think. I just want to know what's up, because you ain't never been a problem. You know, I just broke. I just bought another one about two weeks ago from the store, and I've been had that for years. And the end was shut with the shoulders on the end. And tomorrow, I'll splice it down and fix it up better. Do we need to do a property expose on this? No, nah, we can throw it in the trash. Oh, okay. All right. Go head back in. All right. Where when you see them coming and you you know the process of going through one, it's a pain in the heart, the butt, the head, it's a headache, you know. But I mean it's part of the game. It wouldn't mind though. Gardner may have gotten off for today. But this shakedown makes it clear that cell phones are everywhere at Smith. And Davis has just gotten word of another potential stash. Hey, Cap, check this out. I get, got some information that it might be some drugs and cell phones and uh, tobacco hidden in GCI up in the computer room. Yeah, you want us to hit that? Uh, after G1, I'm gonna go over there and hit that area. All right, then. If the intel is correct, right, hey, there could be $20,000 hey, 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 worth of contraband on the hey, prison grounds. On the Don't talk to nobody about that. Look at here, Cardi. This is what we're gonna do. The target is GCI, a factory on the other side of the camp. And time is of the essence. In prison, news of officer movement travels fast 
and could give the inmates time to move the stash or prepare to defend it. Look at that. Y'all, y'all get together right there. This is what we're going to do. We're going to walk yeah, on the other well, side. Right. We're going to walk on the other side. Well, y'all going to walk the common line, area, check the vents and stuff like clear. that. And we coming up out of there. We're going to get back there to the back. Okay. Huh? 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 We're going to casually walk back here to GCI, because y'all know how those guys are in GCI. Y'all know it's supposed to be a big hit back there, right? Now, look, if the word is out that some of these inmates will fight over that stuff, we're going to have the pepper spray, we have the pepper ball gun. If any of them decide they want to try to fight over that property, we, we, we do what we got to do. That's it. Y'all just keep your eyes on the inmates, see what they're doing in the shop. All right? We're trying to sneak up on them and hope we catch it. All right, let's get ready to ease on them, and we expect to find something. We're wasting too much time. We need to get on back there and do this. At Smith State Prison, Lieutenant J.B. Davis has gotten a lead on cell phones and drugs hidden in the prison factory. Yeah. Now the team is trying to move in without giving away their target. And if their cover's blown, the contraband could be moved. Stop that one right there. Go quickly to the computer room. Show them where the computer room at, Will. Go up there, y'all, go. The team enters, and it looks as if they've maintained the element of surprise. All your, anybody else got any blades on them? And look, all, all of these blades right here, if we find one on you while we're pet searching you now, we find one of these on the white bet you're going to have a problem. But if you got a blade on you right now, we need to see it. All right, y'all start pet searching these guys. No, no, no. Stay right there. Put your hands on top of your head. I'm just going to pat you down. Oh. Crazy lead. Crazy lead. In minutes, the search yields the first find. Don't run face him. Crazy lead. He good. He been wandering already. <laughs> pat him. It's in the little pouches right there. What's up? What's this? Yeah, tobacco. Yeah. Inside, pills and tobacco. Believe me, there's it's a lot more, more than this around here, but they just found some good hiding places. Found some good hiding places. There's a lot more. These guys I have working for me, they can't stand going in and not finding anything. You try to think like the inmate. Where, where would I put it? And that's what it's about. Now that's a good one right there. The officers find makeshift weapons and stolen supplies that could be used for hiding contraband. What is that? Be careful, but don't fall from up there, man. Yeah. What's up with this? This is an instant form ceiling. You'll make your hole, like in the wall or something, and you'll, you'll, you'll take this ceiler and cover it up and smooth it out. And it will look just like a place in the wall. But despite these small finds, the major contraband stash goes undetected. Can y'all find this stuff? And after a full sweep of the factory, it's time to give up. And y'all, y'all guys come in. Tell the truth. Y'all satisfied with what we found? Man, I'm embarrassed. Not of y'all. Y'all work hard. I'm embarrassed because I feel that the inmates we got an inmate standing in here right now that done looked at us 
and said, ha, 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 I knew they couldn't find that shit. You know, that's what I'm embarrassed about because I want to wipe the smile off his face. Some of them inmates over there laughing and smiling, I want to wipe that smile off their face. And hey, y'all bet, bet it up on that? Oh. Let's do it. Davis and his team may have hit a dead end. But 20 miles to the west, another lead on contraband is heating up. All right, guys, what we're going to do here is we'll have a little briefing regarding uh, the surveillance operation we're setting up for tonight. A text message came through on a confiscated phone tipping off investigator John Moore to a possible contraband drop. Hopefully tonight, through surveillance, we're going to be able to execute an arrest regarding contraband being delivered to one of our prisons and dropped off. So Moore is prepping his team of corrections and police officers for a stakeout. We'll, the, we'll bring the radios into play. When it, if something does go down, and when it does happen, let's make sure we get enough, well, we get enough, we got enough of us coming. Today's target, a medium security camp nearby where inmates have more freedom of movement. The kind of mobility that makes a perfect entry point for contraband into the prison system. We'll all be, uh, we'll be with our firearms and all and just think safety first. And we'll rock and roll. We'll see if we can uh, make something happen tonight. All right. All right, guys, I appreciate it. Uh, we've got inmates that are that are work all over these grounds, from cutting grass to handling the agriculture. And uh, that gives them an easy opportunity to pick up contraband and get it back into the prisons uh, through our back gates or whatever. So we're getting all stationed up, and I think everybody's in position now and that all, and uh, we'll, we'll sit up and uh, we'll start doing a little waiting. Right. Most stakeouts come up empty-handed. Yeah. But tonight, it's not long before the radios heat up. There was an Altima that was down on that road back there past the prison that turned around. I don't know if she put somebody out in that field or something. But okay, it must have turned down this street right here then. Oh, that's, that's something's up with this right here. Something, something's up right here. Melt something. Just hang loose here, I, th I think. Might be on something here. The team pulls over a vehicle that got Moore's attention. The driver was making circles around the prison. Ma'am, you just met down there and you turned around up there? Oh, no, I, no. I had, now I'm finna tell you the truth. I'm going to the prison tomorrow to visit somebody. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to find out where I was going, exactly where I was going. All right, ma'am. Listen to me, uh -huh. Sergeant Phillips, Tap Mechanic Sheriff's Office, drug him in the morning. Go check that side right there. Right. Listen to me. She put somebody out, I think. Yeah. Or she's dropping yeah. something. See, he's road back. Hey, she's riding somebody. Yeah. It's all the way in the back. He, he's out there. Where, where were you at? I'll go back. Go ahead, go ahead get the K9 unit. I just identified myself to you. Do you give me consent to search your vehicle? Yes, sir. I have a consent to search your vehicle. Yes, sir. All right. Stand right there. John, you cover her? Yeah. Danny, you cover her? Danny. You cover her? Ma'am, um, you know, can I hold your cell phone there? Do you mind if I look at it? Have you been corresponding with anybody here in the last little bit? The woman admits to driving an accomplice to the prison and letting him out in the surrounding area, loaded with contraband. Where'd you put him out at? It was up there, like up there somewhere. But I got a question. Okay. Now, I'm not going to jail anything. Well, right now, until we find him, he's on prison grounds. And what has he got? The search is on. There is a subject up there. I'm going up that way to help Milton to get in contact the K9. 911 has been contacted the K9. Uh, we have a subject. This subject we have stopped. She has put out a subject in the cornfield just, or in the field just uh, adjacent to uh, the maintenance shop. We need to get in this cornfield because this subject's dropping off some contraband, okay? Thank you, ma'am. 
Outside Rogers State Prison, investigators are hot on the trail of a possible plot to get cell phones into the system. And they've just pulled over the suspected getaway driver. How much money did you make? I didn't make any money. Well, you didn't drive him down half of the hell. Are you in love with him? Is he your boyfriend? I'm, I'm just asking. because no. you don't bring your nice accord down here. I'm going to tell you, he said he was going to give me some gas money. He told me to drop him off here and leave, just go. I said, OK, I'm going back to Atlanta. This gentleman you put out, I know, he is, he, what did he, what kind of package did he have? Did he have a duffel bag? No, he um, had a, um, a black sack. OK. That's all I know. And he, I asked him what was in it. OK. Well, that's gonna be that's gonna, right now. We need to secure him. Okay. That will that will help you in the long run. Smuggling cell phones into prison is a crime in Georgia, punishable by up to five years of hard time. My safety and your safety, okay? So the woman is taken into custody, and the team moves out to find her accomplice. Pretty thick stuff. He'll be in here laying down somewhere, probably. Might lay here all night. The surrounding fields make for a perfect hideout. And a difficult search. But tonight, persistence pays off. The call comes in. Right here across from GSB at 178 and 10-4, let's go, come on, come on, he's got him. The suspect is in custody. He was caught coming out of the woods after throwing a bag filled with contraband over the prison's exterior fence. So that package is going to be somewhere around Motor's Mate. I'll try to get a hold of Pat. Tonight marks another victory for the investigative team. All that remains is catching the inmate as he picks up the package. There's always going to be that desire to get contraband in. Put your feet together for me. To get contraband in means power, means financial gain. And when that desire rises to a high enough level, um, they're willing to put anyone on the line to accomplish that, being it another family member or friends or whatever like we had tonight. As long as there's a will, there's a way. There's no telling how many has got by, but that, that, that's one we've chalked up for us. It's been a good night. You can, uh, you can actually go home and, and sleep well that you've accomplished something. Another plot is disrupted, and more suspects may face charges. It's all part of the cycle in Georgia, where the battle against cell phones churns on that dangerous thing, the cell phone. But as long as you have people willing to take the chance, there's gonna always be a problem with contraband. Any prison in the world you go to, there's a, a war <laughs> fighting with contraband. 
That's what it is, World War III. And we fighting it every day. We on the front line.